Today we're going to talk about conflict re resolution with good customer service. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, conflict resolution as in, um, you know, uh, dealing with people who are uh, maybe you have a disagreement with. In this case, uh, we're going to talk a lot about techniques that are used in the professional world for people to deal with conflicts uh, in their work life. But these same techniques can be used uh, for your professional life. Um, so the purpose of this training is going to be using customer service skills to, to resolve conflict. Uh, and the skills that we'll learn are social skills, anger and stress management, self-calming and conflict resolution. Uh, in my last video, if you haven't seen that one yet, we did a lot about um, kind of... Uh, stress and anxiety management uh, or anger and anxiety ma management uh, that video kind of goes hand in hand with this one because if you can't manage your own feelings it's going to be hard to try to manage other people's feelings so if you haven't watched that one yet i definitely recommend it but you can watch them out of order if you're watching this one now just go ahead and watch the other one later at work and in life you must deal with people who are unhappy um, you know, dealing with people, we all have emotions, and sometimes those emotions are not happy emotions. So you got to learn how to deal with that uh, if you want to work in the community, especially. Um, but if you also want to have healthy relationships, um, it's a good idea to learn how to understand uh, what makes people express anger and what makes them unhappy and to kind of understand uh, that it's not always uh, your responsibility uh, to f you know feel that in a personal way um, but a person still may have anxiety or anger and you still may have to learn how to help them process those feelings so that you can have a better relationship whether it's with a customer or with a friend Sometimes they are unhappy because of something they think you did, and sometimes they there are other things going on in their life that makes them feel upset. When a customer calls or whatever uh, on the phone, or if you're dealing with them in their store, um, try to remember that uh, their whole life happened before they come to meet you. So let's say you're working at a store, a local store, and the customer comes in, you know, they may be coming off of work, they may be coming from home, they may have had to deal with their kids at home all day long who are being, you know, no fun, or maybe they get yelled up by their spouse or their best friend, um, and then they come into you, you know, and they're just looking for supplies, but they may be upset or, uh, you know, so they may speak to you in a curt tone. Um, and again, it's natural to think that they're mad at you, but it's not necessarily the case. Um, when a customer does come to you, whether it's calling you on the phone or um, whether it's in person, um, it's important to listen to what they say and not necessarily, again, to respond to how they are saying it because your goal is to help them solve the problem, sometimes they may just need to vent. Sometimes there's nothing else you could do for them, but just being there to listen actively uh, can really help, uh, help them to figure out what they need. Um, so when someone is, comes to me and say, you know, I have a problem or, uh, you know, I need something, um, I don't interrupt until they're done. The only thing that I will interject with is maybe uh, commentary on what they're saying, you know, nodding in agreement or, you know, saying, I, I hear what you're saying, but I will not, in, you know, interject in a way that makes them s stop speaking because they need, may need to express those emotions, get, get, get them out. Plus, I need to get the information that I need to help them solve their problem. Um, so it's really important for me to listen to the details of what they're saying and not be overwhelmed by the way that they are saying it. 
uh, once the customer is done vending, make sure you know exactly what it is they are upset about. If you are still feeling a little unclear, repeat what you think the person is upset about or ask them questions. Repeating the problem back to the customer or, other, or individual will show them that you are listening and will also let uh, you confirm the problem that needs to be fixed. So again, uh, whether it's uh, in your home life or whether it's at work or whether it's with a customer at work, um, if someone needs something from you, it's a good idea to try to use good listening skills and be able to repeat back what they said. And it's okay to clarify, you know, you shouldn't feel ashamed of, well, you know, I don't, I didn't understand what they said. Um, you may have to ask, can you repeat that back for me? Um, and that's okay because it shows that you're interested. Um, so the keys here are don't interrupt and try to be able to repeat back what was said to you. Um, practice, practice active listening. Usually when a customer calls from your place of work, it's because they have a problem. Uh, they may be upset because they have a problem. I, you know, if I have a problem, I may feel emotions about it. I may accidentally take them out on you. I'm usually a nice guy, but today I'm irritable. Again, you know, if, you, if I come off all defensive when a customer speaks to me that way, um, then it's going to ruin my day. And it's easier said than done sometimes, but you have to realize that most of the time when someone is upset, you know, they are not upset with you, unfortunately, in a way they're taking it out on you. And that's just life. It's important to be able to pick out the important points and separate the emotions or, or maybe even insulting words. So I'm not saying that you have to be a punching bag. I've, in my customer service life, have had to disconnect people who were using violent profanity at me. And I kindly said to them, listen, I'm here to help you, but if you're going to continue to curse at me, I will disconnect, which means I will hang up on you. I always told them that before I hung up on them because I'm trying to be the polite person. Uh, so you may run into a situation at work where someone's being insulting and, you know, it's getting you nowhere. You know, they're, they're not able to express what they need. Uh, you're not going to be able to help them because they are so infuriated. At that point, I get a supervisor say, hey, you know, um, I'm, I'm obviously not the one to help you here. So if you want to hold, I can put you on hold if you're on the phone or, or whatever. But obviously, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to stand here and have you curse at me and insult me. You know, it's okay to say that uh, if they continue to go on and on. A lot of times you point that out to them and they will... They'll uh, recognize, you know, you know, I've had people apologize to me. I'm really sorry for, you know, cursing at you earlier. Um, sometimes people just need to be aware. So I will let someone vent to a point, but I'm not saying that you have to accept verbal abuse, uh, you know, just because they're upset. To a point, maybe, for a minute, I may let them rant, but then, you know, at some point... If they're not able to be rational, you're not going to be able to help them anyway. So then you just get a supervisor and let them deal. Uh, actively empathize. The ability to empathy is the ability to understand and share feelings of another person. So a lot of times you can empathize with a person. Um, uh, showing empathy will help you make the customer understand that you are really trying to help. Once you have confirmed what the problem is, show them that you feel really bad about it and completely understand uh, why they're upset. Say something like, I completely understand your frustration. Waiting for a pizza, especially when you're really hungry, is a horrible feeling. You know, if you can relate to what they're saying, if you understand, you know, even if they're being mean about it, but if you can understand why they feel upset, it, it goes a long way to help, you know, um, calm them down, you know, um, and let them know that you're here to help. When people feel like they're actually getting the help they need, they will usually calm down. 
Um, it's your, when you act like, you know, you can't help them or they get the feeling like you're not going to help them. Even if I can't help somebody, you know, I can definitely empathize and say, you know, listen, this this thing you're dealing with is above my head and I'm going to get a supervisor for you because just getting somebody who can help them, even if you're not in a position to help them, you know, empathize first and let them know you're sorry. Let them know that the help you're going to get them is by getting someone who can help them. You know, and a lot of times that's enough. It's okay to admit you don't have all the answers. Um, well, you could say to them, you know, you have a right to be really annoyed. The leverage can throw off, you know, your your plans. You know, like I said, just recognize that you have emotions, they have emotions. And uh, even if they are being really uncomfortable or, or whatever, um, they're having a response to a bad time. And if you can recognize that, it can go a long way to kind of diffuse things. Apologize gratefully, gracefully, even if you did nothing wrong. Let the individual know that you are generally, genuinely sorry that, that this happened to them, regardless of uh, if you think that they are being a bit dramatic about the situation. Along with empathizing, apologizing can go a long way. Sometimes... Upset customers just want to have someone to apologize to them for the bad service. Hopefully, the customer will cool down a bit once you apologize on behalf of the company. Say something like, I'm sorry that your pizza was not delivered on time. It's incredibly frustrating when that happens, and I completely understand why you were annoyed. Let's see what we can do to make this right. You know, so I will usually offer someone options. I won't give an open-ended thing like... Uh, well, what can I do for you? Because uh, that usually goes badly. I want a million dollars. I had a lady once tell me I worked at a photo finishing plant, and uh, she sent her pictures in from Rome in Italy. And you know, she spent a week in Italy, and we destroyed her pictures accidentally. Um, you know, and she wanted us to send her back to Rome. And obviously, you're not going to send them back to Rome, even though you can understand why she asked that. But I would not open myself up to letting the customer dictate what they're going to get necessarily. I will give them a set of options that I know I can offer or if I can't or if I don't know what I can offer, I will check with a supervisor and say, what can I offer? And then go back to the lady and say or the man or whatever and say listen, this is this is what I can do for you. Uh, I know it doesn't replace your trip to Italy but this is what I can do. You know. Um all the while being very sorry and recognizing that it's an awful thing and we really wish we could send her back to Italy, but we're not going to. But don't say I'm not going to. Just say, you know, this is what I can do. Just keep it positive. This is what I can do. All right, don't say I can't do that. To say, um, offer a possible solution or solutions. Like I said, I like to give people choices. Um, so if I can give multiple choices, it depends on what your company policy is to wherever you're working. You know, often a good strategy is to offer a person who is upset a choice of solutions. This helps to empower the customer to make them feel like they are part of the solution and that you care about making it right for them. Customers get rude or angry for a variety of reasons, some justified, some not. But whether you work in a business to serve customers or talk to people at all, uh, people frequently at all, you're likely to encounter rude and angry individuals at one time or another. How you respond can make the difference between a customer who feels satisfied with a solution and one who vows never to use your business again. Uh, it can also mitigate um, any kind of uh, awkwardness that you feel because they're yelling at you. You know, if you can. Uh, give someone a solution to a problem uh, or a set of solutions um, then it can help to people feel empowered or powerless uh, they tend to be angry and frustrated and irrational but uh, if people have power if they have some sort of you know a, ability to um, and like I said even just having a set of options to choose from they will tend to be a little bit less angry than if they completely feel hopeless or powerless. Um, so here are some tips for to kind of review about 
um, how to deal with uh, the difficult situations uh, at work or in your personal life or on the phone with people. When a person starts yelling or being otherwise rude, there is nothing to be gained by responding in a similar manner. In fact, they will probably make things worse. Maintain control of yourself. Even if the customer's tirade makes you feel like yelling, kill them with sincere kindness. It can be a true source of pride to be able to keep your cool when someone else is losing it on you. A lot of times when people are angry or are mad at you, um, they're mad at the person they're calling on the phone or whatever, they are looking for a response and they are hoping that you say something bad. They're hoping that uh, they can get you in trouble, sometimes even. Uh, I know that sounds crazy. So people, um, when they're being irrational, sometimes they're looking to get a rise out of you. You know, sometimes they want to bring you to a supervisor and they want someone to blame. Right? And what I'm not going to be duped into is uh, being angry because someone else is angry. I'm not going to play that game with people. The game that I play is you are rude and awful to me and I'm going to continue to smile and be nice as pie. Um, because that's the right thing to do. And for a person who is being absolutely ridiculous, um, sometimes that's a way to make you feel a sense of pride that they were looking for you to get upset and they were looking to hurt you and you weren't going to let them. You know, uh, so if you can put a smile on your face, uh, let them hear you smile. You know, if I'm on the phone, people can hear you smile. So when someone's mad at me, um, if you are watching me on my little headset when I was working customer service, you could tell when someone was mad at me because I'd be going like this when I talk. Big smile. Hi. I'm sorry that happened to you. You know, just... Uh, it's really hard to stay mad at someone who's going to be completely nice to you. Uh, and those ones who keep yelling at you who aren't calmed down by that, uh, you know, they're going to disconnect or whatever. And, or they're going to go to a su uh, supervisor, but it's not something, uh, you know, you're not going to have to talk to them very long if, uh, if they can't keep their cool anyway. And if uh, they're uh, going to continue to rant and rave when you're being nice. You can't help them anyway, so you might as well just leave them with uh, a good impression of the company anyway, you know. Um, at least that person was nice to me. And later on, they may reflect on how awful they were, but you were still nice, so. Don't take it personally. Remember, the customer is not angry with you. They are displeased with the performance of your product or the product that you or company sells or the quality of the service you provide. Your personal feelings are besides the point. So again, it's not about you. Okay, don't make it about you. If uh, someone's angry, uh, they may think it's about you. It's not about you. You may think it's about you. It's not about you. It's about whatever experience or whatever going on in their head, whatever bad experience they had. But really, you know, just try to not take it personally. Use your best listening skills. The first thing an angry customer wants to do is vent. To do so, they need someone to listen. And for better or worse, you are that person. Listening patiently can diffuse the situation. If the customer feels you really need to hear his or her complaint, hear them out. When they are done talking, summarize what you have heard and ask any questions that further clarify their complaint. Body language can be critically important here. Keep eye contact. Stand or sit up straight. Keep your uh, keep your arms are uncrossed. Don't show your close uh, sorry. Show you're closely paying attention to their problem. Listen to what the customer is saying and not how. Okay. So I don't know if you can see me here, but like don't fold your arms like this. Okay, you know, I may put my hand up like that to show that I'm listening and I'm going to make eye contact. Um, or maybe just have them folded in front of you, you know, like this, but down. Um, if, you're, if you're on the phone, um, do the same things because you can definitely hear it in someone's voice. I know when someone is not listening on the phone. 
and I know when they are, and I know when they're getting upset on the phone, just by the tone of voice. So if even if you're on this phone uh, talking to someone, force yourself to smile. Okay, I sit up straight and you know and pay attention. Uh, if I'm on the phone, I like that uh, even better because I can take notes. I will write down what they're saying and ask them to repeat back what they're saying so that they can make sure I get it straight. Um, but just, you know, stare right ahead, make eye contact, and let them finish because uh, yeah, you can't solve their problem while they're upset. People who are mad are not rational, and they may not be able to be rational until they vent first. We said actively empathize. After a customer vents, he or she wants to know you understand where they're coming from and how he or she feels. Express sympathy for their unpleasant customer service, customer experience. Respect and understanding go a long way towards smoothing things over. Try to remember that we all have bad days and that the person who is losing it may have been having a bad day already and is just emotional. They don't really know you, so how can they be mad at you? They're mad at the situation, and you may have to be in a position to listen, but you're also there to be the person who can fix their problem. You may be able to make their day better. You're the VIP for the day. Uh, be proud to be in a position where you can help people, even when they're at their worst. Uh, apologize sincerely. Again, it doesn't have to be your fault for you to apologize. Okay? Uh, you are there to apologize for the company. And um, some people just need an apology. If you can give them an apology and it calms them down, swallow your pride and give it to them. Uh, if you want them to stay your customer, you need to express an apology for the problem that they're having or think that they're having. A simple, straightforward statement is often all that is needed. I'm sorry that you're not happy with our product. Let's see what we can do to make it right. Apologies can go a long way. Assuring the customer, the coworker, or a friend that you will help them solve their problem or find someone who can goes a long way toward building trust and rapport. So rapport is building a personal relationship. When someone first calls me on the phone, again, it's not personal, right? By the end, I want to make it personal, but I want them to be on my side about it. You know, so um, I'm not going to take their negative emotions personal, but if I can transform that into a positive experience with me and make it personal in that way. Uh, we talked about finding a solution. Once you understand why an individual, individual is unhappy, it's time to offer a solution. Ask him or her what uh, they feel should be done to put uh, forward your own fair, realistic answer to the problem. In most cases, that's all the individual is looking for and may result in providing some degree of satisfaction. So if I offer some solutions that, like I said, they may not be awesome, like they may not be what the customer is looking for, but usually by the time they calm down, they realize you're not sending them to Italy. Um, but just offering some way of you know, well, we give you a free service for your next visit or something like that. Or um, it just kind of depends on the company policy. But um, make sure that if you can't find a solution, you get somebody who can before they hang up. Don't leave them with, well, I'm sorry, I can't help you click. Right? I'm sorry that that happened to you. I'm not sure what I can do, but let me, if you, Give them options. So I'll say, I need to talk to a supervisor about this. Is it okay if I put you on hold, or if that's not okay, can you give me your phone number so I can call you back? I'll give them even that option. That's the first way to start to empower them to start talking to you. But if I just say, I need to put you on hold, please hold. When if someone says, please hold, if I call and I have a problem, someone says, please hold, click. I'm not happy when I come back. But if they just say, can I put you on hold to go to get a solution to your problem, then I'm a lot more uh, willing to listen. Because uh, I feel empowered. Yes, you can definitely put me on hold to solve my problem. You know? So, 
just make sure that there's a clear understanding. If you're going to put someone to hold, make sure you have their permission to do that. And if they don't want to hold, get their number and ask to call them back. Uh, after you deal with someone who is uh, like that, after you done that stressful situation, you have a lot of emotions for your own that you need to take care of. So um, you have to have, you know, we always talk about coping skills. So you have to have your own coping skills. Take some time. You know, uh, when I worked for customer service on the phone, you know, there were times where I was almost in tears by the end of it. And I had to just step away and calm myself down, you know, go get a coffee, go, go for a walk. Um, whatever you need to do, listen to some music to forget about it and move on. But you definitely have to take that time for yourself um, because helping people is often stressful because you're trying to kind of take on their feelings in a way and, you know, you're dealing with a lot of things that they are processing uh, that now you have to process too. So um, whatever it does, you know, whatever it takes for you to feel better, take that time when it's all over. Um, this would be a question for the class, but since it's kind of online here, um, what is your self-calming technique or coping skill when you're upset? Think about it. Um, uh, think about it ahead of time. Have a plan. Have a plan to feel better, um, because, uh, bad stuff happens, even if you don't work in customer service. Having a plan for what you need to do when you feel upset is important. Um, uh... You know, if you're even if you're at work, you know, even if, if you're just here at the center of hope and someone barks at you, you know, a coworker or whatever, you know, you can always take a break. Just ask somebody, though. Um, ask for help. You know, don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, I would much rather have an employee who asks for help than one who toughs it out and makes uh, more errors because they didn't ask for help. Uh, so if you need help with calming down, again, definitely you know, have that kind of relationship with your supervisors where you're not afraid to ask for that. So that's the end of my slideshow. Thanks for listening, and um, thanks for being part of this experience because I'm just learning how to put video onto slideshows. Um, if you want, once you put some, um, you know, uh, down in the, uh, there's not going to be a comment section here, but uh, on the um, class, um, news feed if you want to put down some of the ways that you use to calm down or any comments you have about this video that'd be great that way i know you're listening and uh we'll talk to you soon hopefully uh, next time we'll be able to do a zoom where i get to see some faces